In the 12th Sunday of Ordinary Time, we are going to see the theme of this liturgy to remind us of doing and reward those who do. The first reading taken from the prophet Jeremiah, we have to have a little background of that reading in order to understand it. Jeremiah was about 19 years of age when God called him to be a prophet. And he said, Lord, are you crazy to make me go to these old people who are, who are scribes and who are uh, priests and so and tell them that what they are doing is wrong? They will tell me where to go. He said, I am too young. And the Lord said to him, don't tell me what to do. Come over here. And the Lord descended upon him the Holy Spirit gave him that power that he gave the other prophet to go to proclaim. And today we see that after he proclaimed the word, he was not rewarded, but he was being ridiculed. He, people began to make fun of him. In fact, they want to kill him. They want to destroy him because he is going against the system. If he is telling, if he was favoring them in what they were doing, then he would be all right. But because he was coming against them, they will try to destroy him. And today he say, I see vengeance on every side. Why? Because they want to destroy me. They want to destroy because I am doing what you ask me to do. In the Gospel today, we find Jesus give us the command. The harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. That is the command. That is what we say uh, the, uh, the command that the Lord sent to us to do. At the end of the Gospel he said, And those who do what I ask them to do, I will present them to my Heavenly Father. But to those who refuse to do what I ask them to do, I will be ashamed to present them to my Heavenly Father. So you see, there is, uh, there is to do and the reward if you do. That is the reward of those do not do and what the consequence is. In the meantime, Jesus is asking us to remind uh, ourselves that in doing this proclamation, some people want to kill us. They want to destroy the body. Don't be afraid of that. Because after all, it's not this life that is, that is something eternal. But your soul will be eternal with me. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body. But be afraid of those who kill both the, the, uh, the, the flesh and the soul. And here Jesus is speaking about each one of us are living in a society. There is a society of a family, society of our community, society of our, uh, of our nation, as, as you know, even those who are in politics, and we need to stand up when the truth is not being, uh, as we say, lived. Who are the people to make a judgment over an unborn baby that they have a choice to destroy him when we know that life belongs to God? Who can enter a second marriage when Jesus said, what God, what God unite together, no one can put it apart? And this is exactly what the Lord is trying to say to us. That we need to understand that we need to stand up for the injustice. We need to stand up for the truth. We need to be there to guide people by our lives and by our words to the truth. And that's why the second reading today reminds us that the Apostle St. Paul is saying to us bef when, uh, from Adam to Moses, there was, there was no sin. Not that there was no sin. There would, nobody knows that this is a sin. But when God gave the commandments to Moses, now the law become a fact. It's like I am going driving and I come to the end of the street and there is no sign of stopping. Either somebody took the sign away, either the sign is covered with all debris, but there is no sign. So I go through and I get in an accident or a policeman stopped me. I go to court and the judge said to me, did you see the sign? I said, there is no sign. And if the 
police can testify that there is no sign in appearance, he will throw the case out. Because when the law become effective, when it is known, when I know, when there is there is a sign or there is a written law by which I have to live with. But then he say when Jesus come, although many were condemned with the transgression of Adam, what a grace it was given to those that by the by the Paschal mystery of Christ we have received so much graces that overabound, overabound those who do not know about sin prior to, to Jesus. As we come to celebration to the Mass today, let us really take that verse of the Gospel. The harvest is heavy, but the labors are few. Many times, you know, when we read that Gospel, we say this is about priests, about nuns. It's about every one of us. In the virtue, in the, in the, in the sacrament of baptism, we are immersed because we are called to immerse in the passion and death of Christ. And from that water we are called now to descend. That's why at the end of the Mass, as we celebrate the mystery of Christ, the dying and the rising, what the priest say, or the deacon, go now in peace and bring this peace to where you are going to be. So this is the mission of each Christian. Not only to know Jesus, and to learn about him and to receive him, that's good. But then, what is next? The next is, I have to make him known. Because if I don't make him known, I am going to receive the sentence that we read in the Gospel. You will not make me known to the people, I will not make you known to the Father. But if you make me known to the people, I will make you known to the Father. So, there is a condition of, of reward. If you did, I will be ple pleasantly uh, present you to my father. If you did not, I will not be, you know, that uh, that that uh, that kind of. I cannot present to my father because as I have left heaven, because the father wants me to do so. So the father called me. Today you are my son, and he sent me into the world to do the mission of the father. So each one of us who wants to be in the pa in, in, in part of the mission of Christ, which is immersed in the past and mystery of Christ, we need to take the cross of Jesus every day. And the cross will lead us to Calvary. And then we'll be acknowledged by the Father as the altar of Jesus. That's why we are called Christians. Because we reflect the presence of God among us. And so it's not how much we say we know Jesus, but how much in our action, in our words, we present Jesus to others. We need to touch other people's lives. We need to better their lives. We need to tell them that God loves them. We need to tell them do not be afraid to stand for the truth. Do not be afraid to speak for God. Because God is understanding what you are doing and what you are going through. And although it's going to cost you your life, it's going to cost you persecution, it's going to cost you rejection, remember that the reward at the end of the tunnel is going to be one of the greatest rewards you ever receive in this world. And that is eternal life with God. My dear people, as we go to celebration of the Mass today, we take it very seriously. That there is a lot of things to be done in the world today. There are a lot of people who want to know Jesus. There is a lot of people who, in their fright or in their, in their fear, they are afraid to take action. There are a lot of people that because of their situation, of what happened to them, they, they don't know which, which, which direction they go. And we are the one that by our presence, that manifests the will of God, will show them, and even by directing by our words, how to act and how to go about. My dear people, this is the message that we have today. But to present that the mission of Jesus is for the apostles, the mission of Jesus for everybody. Before he left, what he said to the apostles? Go and teach on nations. 
this was the universal the universal teaching of Jesus and this is what Jesus expects from each one of us so that at the end of the journey which will you know will, will go so fast if you ask somebody how old are you they tell you maybe 79 or 80 they say oh my god you god. and he will say to you I don't know how those years go by because these days of our lives are very short comparing with eternity so we pray that we take the message of Jesus and try to make that message known to the world so that at the end of the journey when I am presented to the Father Jesus will say here is my son here is my daughter because they have done what you asked of me to do and because they were faithful and they were good they will continue to do what you ask of me and they did the job that you asked of me to do and they are and they did it in the world. God bless you.